Hi and welcome to Phoenix TV. Of course, this is the show that brings you Manchester's fastest, most exciting sports team, the Manchester Phoenix. We've got a bumper show for you today because we've got uh, highlights and interviews from our fantastic cup win against Swindon. And we've also got the regulars tonight. We'll have this preview with Andy, player interviews, match highlights and a post-match preview. So we'll start off, Andy, we've got five minutes before hockey starts, so we're going to have to hurry with this one. We certainly are. We've got a lot pack in. And of course... It's not raining. No, we're al fresco tonight. Al fresco. Is he a new signing? <laughs> Italian. Italian. Right, OK. Well, let's talk about the Swindon game, the Swindon game, and the Swindon game. It's a really? lot of Swindon games. First one, 5-2 at home. Uh, I wasn't at that one, unfortunately. I was a bit crook, so uh, tell take us through it quickly. Yeah, it was um, a tough first period. Uh, Swindon really took it to us in the first period, and we came out as our... We traditionally seem to do recently, a little bit flat. Uh, we kept in touch and then second and third periods played very, very well and, and, and really pushed home our advantage. And it was it was, it was was quite a comfortable win in the end. Um, some good goals and uh, I think the guys were determined to put down a marker for the cup game midweek. Right, all we'll see about the cup game, obviously everybody knows the result by, by now, but let's just say it's worth watching. It was brilliant. Uh, for me, it was a complete performance, and, and, and bearing in mind the occasion and and what was at stake, uh, I thought we, we put in uh, an absolutely magnificent performance. Every player turned up to play and, and gave 110%. OK, then. We may as well have a look and see what happened. Of course, here, another good hit comes in stand from Nell. Walker working the puck loose, Chamberlain back door towards Ben Ward who had his stick well tied up by Sam Bullis. Stevie Lyle, Kovar draws the puck back, Wood gets it out of his feet, Burling towards the net, traffic in front, Lyle does well to knock it away. From Thomas Cannot, Kovar trying to pick off the ball, couldn't do it, Cannot will bring it into the zone, sharp angle effort goes high and wide. Postle trying to knock the puck down, Ben Wood banking it up the boards, he does well to work it back, there will be a penalty call though. Will swing the puck nicely across into the zone. Comes Michael Cerny. He sends it around the boards. Moore chops it around. Kept it fired nicely into the corner by Frankie Backlick. And sweep it out front. They score! James Archer! What a pass from Tony Hand! He didn't need to look because he knew James Archer was there. And Archer fires it through the pads of Stevie Lyle. The Phoenix power play comes good again. And they take the lead. It's Manchester 1. Swindon 0. Thompson with a good draw win. Graham up the boards to Robin Kovac. Gets his head up, feeds Graham, who tries to split his way through the D. Still, and Graham scores! It's Route 1, but Route 1's the best way to go sometimes. The Wildcats couldn't bring Joe Graham down. He gets his stick free and fires it past the left pad of Stevie Lyle. The Phoenix have a two-goal cushion with 4.55 to go in the first. It's Manchester 2, Swindon 0. Outside the line. Kovart feeds Thompson, who's got a bit of room into the zone, he gets it across. Shot from Ben Wood, save made by Lyle, rebound comes back out to Wood, who feeds Thompson in behind the net. Wood on the hash marks. On top of the circle, tip comes in from Archer, it's just wide. Cerny will get it back to Ben Wood on the point, who plays it around. Hand has the puck knocked loose, Archer alive too, it gets it away back to Hand. Archer this time letting it run, Cerny setting up behind the goal. Hand waiting out in front, instead Cerny still holds, gets it back to Ben Wood. From the point, shot is well blocked by the shin pads of Malasinski. The Phoenix do keep it alive. Though. Backdoor chance in front, they score! James Archer again! The Wildcats completely asleep at the back as they didn't get the zone clear. Michael Cerny across, James Archer scores. Stevie Lyle is despondent and the Phoenix lead by three goals to nil. This way down the ice is Richardson winding, shooting good block. Joe Graham, Archer gets it away, hand is into the zone. He delays, he slides it across, and Archer scores the hat trick. Another awful change from Swindon. Tony Hand got the pass from Archer, gives it back. He guides it through Stevie Lyle, and it's all going right on the night for the Manchester Phoenix. They lead Swindon by four goals to nil. Through for Berlin. Hand wants the pass, gets the pass. Lovely feed, Cerny. He's in behind the D, makes a little move and scores! Magic! 
Michael Cerny. Little deep goes to the backhand through the pads of Stevie Lyle. It's a Challenge Cup rout at the Ice Stone. We've still got just less than 15 to go. In the second, it's 5 0. Pass ahead, hand sweeping it up the boards to Michael Cerny. He's got Archer crashing the net. One time a score! That's a brilliant, brilliant goal from James Archer and the Manchester Phoenix. It's a team effort from one end to the other. Gorgeous pass from Cerny. Archer's got four. The Phoenix have got six. And we're not even halfway through the game. It's Manchester six, Swindon nil. Simmons sweeps around the boards. Graham shoved into the boards from behind. Not taking kindly to that was... Joe Graham and he's dropping the goods with Floyd Taylor. Taylor making no attempt to fight back. It was a late hit from behind and I think Joe Graham's got his pound of flesh there. Miles out of the net again. This time feeds Alex Simmons. Long pass well read by Ben Wood. Got his stick in there, but Swindon will gain it. So Hanna towards the front fold as well to sweep it away. Costal ties up with Wood, chance at the back door, and they score. Thomas Canner it is who puts it in. Costal and Wood were still tied up behind the net. Canner came in off the bench and nobody picked him up. The shutout of Stephen Foe is broken by Thomas Canner with 6.49 to go in the second. It's Phoenix 6, Swindon 1. Berlin and across it goes. The Phoenix will dump it in. Lyle gets a stick on it. Fires it ahead. Knocked down in front from top to get there. Yes, he can and he scores. Well, Stevie Lyle's gone for plenty of wonders tonight, but that one has cost him as he tried to play a pass down the middle of the ice. Thompson picks it up, gets back to his feet, and eventually bundles it in. Normal service resumed. It's Phoenix 7, Swindon 1. Face off one by Harding, who flips the puck through. Costal forced into the boards by Ben Wood as well to keep possession. Plays it back to Who on the point, across to Nell, who shoots, Foam paddles it away. Chance in front, good stop by Foam, but the rebound is tucked in. It's a really good save by Stephen Foam, first time on Adam Harding, but the rebound comes back off the Phoenix goalie, and Harding taps it in. It's a power play goal for Swindon. And it's Phoenix 7, Swindon 2. Hand at the puck, come off his skate. Simmons can clear it away. Pope playing the puck out. Pass finds Archer. Will skate his way into the zone. Cerny delays, floats it through for James Archer. Hand down for Cerny again. Hand. Makes the shot, gives it for Cerny. Out in front, Archer scores! Patient, patient, patient. Cerny out front, and James Archer bundles it through the pads of Stevie Lyle. It's another power play goal. It's a fifth of the night for James Archer, and it's Manchester 8, Swindon 2. Face off one by the Wildcats. The Phoenix will run from behind the net. Played out one time a Hoogan he scores. Nicely worked by the Wildcats as they turn the puck over behind the net. And it's a one timer from Jonas Hoog that smacked up over the glove of Stephen Foe into the top corner. It's another power play goal for Swindon. And it's Manchester 8, Swindon 3. Thompson nicely threads it through. Kovar dances past Moore, plays it across. Walker shot and he scores. The Phoenix answer right back, it's raining goals at the Ice Stone. Great bit of skill by Kovar to gain the zone. Walker cradles it back, Rister in off the post, past the left pad of Lyle. It's Manchester 9, Swindon 3. For Stephen Whitfield, he gives it back to Shane Moore. Who... 
trying the long pass comes off the knee of Thompson it will break down into the zone towards who Kovar with the stick lift to knock the puck through into the corner Malice is going to try to sweep it in front knocked away by the Phoenix and away they'll come down the left hand side is Robin Kovar Bob just forcing him wide Kovar cuts in brilliant goal that is a magic way to bring up number 10 for the Manchester Phoenix it's Robin Kovar at his very very best he drives past Callum Bugless roots it up over Stevie Lyle double figures on the board it's Manchester 10 Sweden 3 Simmons is onto it passes it into the skates of Harding Chamberlain looking to knock it down Jan Kostel will play it across for Bugless he will skate it ahead print it back through towards Kostel who delays goes back door and they score Nice pass from Jan Kostel and it's Thomas Kanner who will get his second of the night, tapping it past Stephen Foe. Another one for Swindon and it's 10 4. This man behind the net trying to sweep it out from. Pass comes off the stick of Cerny. Graham plays it away from Tony Hand. More from the red line will fire it in. Comes off the arm of Stephen Foe. Graham as well to get his stick in there. Kanner towards Moore in front who backhands and scores. It's another one for Shane Moore and the Wildcats as the Phoenix, to be honest, have given up defending and with it a minute and a half to go. Can you really blame them? It's Manchester 10, Swindon 5. Pass Chamberlain ties up his map and as it's dumped in by the Phoenix, what could have been a British Challenge Cup classic, it's a British Challenge Cup blowout to the ice stone. 15 goals could not have been predicted by anybody at the start of the night. And in truth, the five that the Wildcats got were mostly at the end when it didn't really matter. They have absolutely blown Swindon away tonight, the Manchester Phoenix. And it will be two legs with Telford to decide the British Challenge Cup for the Manchester Phoenix. Final aggregate score is 13-8. It's finished at the ISO. Manchester Phoenix 10, Swindon Wildcats 5. Right, here we are with Phoenix TV. Final score tonight, Manchester Phoenix 10, Swindon Wildcats 5, giving us an adric score of 13-8, and we progress to the cup final against Telford. I'm here with our man of the match, uh, five-goal hero, but then the whole team were heroes tonight. I'm here with James Archer. Hi, James. Yeah, it's Ambo. Yeah, it, just, just talk about yourself first. It really clicked for you tonight. Yeah, it did. You know, I had my me, uh, me hammer and chisel out before the game on my stick, and uh, luckily it worked for me tonight. You know, because I've missed quite a few of those uh, those back doors over the over the year. You know, it's not really been working for me. But uh, you know, Bosch tonight, I uh, I got in there. But the one that, the one that stood out for me was uh, Tony's backhand pass to you right right in front of the net, and wow, and you just stroked it past Stevie. Yeah, that was the uh, the first one I think, weren't it? Just yeah. <laughs> no, but let's just just talk about the team tonight. I mean, it was it was an outstanding performance from. Say from Stevie Phone right up to right up to the, the the last man on the third line. Everybody just played their heart out. Yeah, we we knew what we had to do tonight. You know, we got a bit of confidence from Sunday when obviously when we took these guys on uh, on Sunday and beat them five two at home. So we we were confident going into it. You know, we knew what we had to do, and you know we progressed to the final for the I think the first time since I've been here. So hopefully this year we can uh, we can go and take that that. The last time we reached a final was against Belfast back in our last Elite League season. Uh, so it's really nice to get there and uh, we'll enjoy ourselves. Yeah, hopefully. You know, we know we're taking on. We're taking on Telford. You know, the fantastic side this year and we've just got to, you know, come together as a unit and get the job done. But we needn't fear anybody playing like that. No, we, we're playing well lately. So, you know, we know what we've got to do. A couple of laps as well. We let them back in, get a few goals, but... We, we're going to iron that out and, uh, you know, look forward to uh, playing them on uh, on Saturday. Right, yes, of course, we've got them in a league match on Saturday and uh, they'll be itching to, to hit back at us, so it's going to be a different game, I think. Yeah, hopefully we can, you know, do a job down there and hopefully come away with the points and be two points closer to them in the league standings and that's what it's all about at this point of the year is moving up that table. That's right. James, thanks very much. What a superb night for everybody. We all loved it. I'm sure the team did as well. And good luck at the weekend. Cheers, Dan. Okay, last night down at Swindon, we lost 4-2 again, empty net goal at the end, 
But uh, it was literally the journey from hell to get down there. They got caught in the M5 troubles. Didn't get there till 7 o'clock and 10-minute uh, warm-up and straight onto it. But to be honest, the boys actually played quite well. I mean, we, we've, there's not much between the two teams and there really wasn't again last night. No, I think uh, it was a bit of an improvement on previous games. We didn't go 3-0 down, we just went the 2-0 down. But yeah, I mean, the guys, uh, seven hours on a bus, it must have been tough in the first period and, and to keep in touch was, was a good effort, really. And three hours waiting in a pub for them to get there was terrible. That must have been awful for you. It was, but I, I did it for the cause, you know. <laughs> right, uh, let's move on to tonight's game. Milton Keynes they seem to be getting things right. An excellent result last night against Peter Phantoms. Yeah, perhaps an unexpected result as well. Peter have been flying recently. Um, they've got a guy banging form in Milan Kosterek. Uh, he seems to be uh, racking up the goals quite uh, quite considerably. They've obviously got our old mate Curtis Huffy playing for them. And yeah, they seem to be. Um, I think they've sort of realised that that you know they need to improve their league position for the playoffs. And all of a sudden, they started to put some performances in. It's beginning to look like. Uh uh, you know, we've actually qualified for the playoffs now, so we actually cannot be lower than eighth. So we're we are mm. there. But of course, Sheffield and Milton Keynes, uh, I'll be I'll be playing out for that bottom spot. Nobody will want to play Telford, really. No, no. But we do. I, <laughs> I, I I don't think there's going to be much movement in the league table between now and, and and the end of the season. I think it's going to be. I think the only possible switches are maybe Swindon and uh, and Peterborough, and Milton Keynes and Sheffield. Um, I think we will probably stay pretty much where we are now. So, Of course, that will have a bearing on uh, on who we play in the quarterfinals, mm. but at the end of the day, as, as, as Tony said last year, it doesn't matter who we play. We've two games against them and we've got to beat them. Yeah, whatever's gone before in the league, y you can disregard. You know, It's two one-off games and um, everybody ups their play in the playoffs. There's, there's a greater degree of intensity and uh, whoever comes out over those two games will have deserved it. Well, we're getting ahead of so we've still got another month of hockey to go yet, Absolutely. but uh, really tonight we're looking for the two points so that, that will more or less keep them below us for the rest of the season, so that's yeah. really what we'll be looking for. I think we, we do, we're we looking forward to an exciting game, they're always good games against Milton Keynes, so uh, let's hope we uh, we see another, go another game with lots of goals and, and we come out on top. So let's go watch some hockey. We'll give it to Cerny behind the net. Yeah. Back out for Walker on the point. He lays it across, backlink, walking and shooting up over the crossbar, and the puck will bounce into the netting and out of play. The boards Berlin knocks it away from Hook. Backlink will skate back onto it and then curl his way around the Phoenix zone. Long pass was looking for Kovar. Icing waved off. There was a deflection on it. Green can't get it past Thompson. Backlick's in front. He's upended. That's going to be another penalty. Kovar will end it in low. Walker keeps it away from McPherson. Corson Heron comes in as well. Puts in the skates, Corson Heron. Who back heels it through to himself. Walker hooked into the board. And first looking for Chamberlain. Good stop rebound. They score. Bobby Chamberlain. Great work from the Phoenix third line. Cycling it around the zone and drawing the strength out of Milton Keynes. It was a really good stop by Wall the first time of Aston. But Chamberlain backs the rebound in. And the Phoenix take the lead. It's Manchester 1, Milton Keynes 0. Kosterek doesn't look entirely comfortable, and he doesn't win the draw. Kovar has the puck bounce up in the air. Cerny nicely muscles Ross Green out of the way. Hand sweeps it back to Kovar on the blue line. From the middle, shoots and scores! Robbie Kovar floats one towards the net. Thompson was parked in front, and I don't think Stephen Wall saw it. It floats over his glove, and with 17 seconds left in the first period, the Phoenix double the lead with a power play goal. It's Manchester 2, Milton Keynes 0. The tank will go to work. He gets it back to Ben Wood from the point. Lots of traffic in front. Puck's loose. Walker takes a high stick. That will be called by Tom Perry. Phone will head to the bench as Russell touches the puck. CNI Solutions, keeping your computer network infrastructure beating. Because if it stops, so does your business. We provide many unique ways of keeping your network running at its full potential. Ensuring your company never misses a beat. CNI Solutions, keeping your computer network infrastructure beating.
Your old car? Seen better days? Given up the ghost? You need the friendly guys at Davidson's. One phone call is all you need. They'll collect your car for free, sort out that nasty paperwork, and transform your old banger into lots of lovely cash. Because Davidson's are extremely reputable and recommended by the DVLA. So for the best prices, cash on the spot, and to scrap your car with confidence, call us on 0161 928 9981. Davidson's, we're talking scrap. Here at CW Motors, we provide a large range of high quality services. Your vehicle will be looked after by our highly qualified and dedicated team using both state of the art technology and good old fashioned elbow grease. We specialise in accident crash repair, mechanical and bodywork, and MOT preparation. We also have oven and jig facilities and can provide insurance estimates. So, for a friendly and professional service, come and see us at Victoria Mill, Droylston. Or you can call us on 0161 371 9983. So for James Neal. Neal, long stretch past Thompson, lovely tip back, back look, trying to send Ben Russell the long way. Milton Keynes will look to bring it into the zone. County hops over Joe Graham like a falling swan. Curl and then play it around towards Adam Walker. Backhands towards the blue line. Carlson Heron trying to chop it through. Comes off his skate. Kosterek trying to work it loose. That stick still lying on the ice. Carr plays it across. Walking in his Christie off the shoulder of Foden. Will float the backhand towards Hockey Puck. Good pass stopped by Foden. Came off the leg of Lewis Hook. Emerson playing it back towards the point. Backlick reached in. Kovar's offended. Has to be a penalty. Lewis Christie didn't mean to do it, but he upends Robin Kovar. The Phoenix are going the power play. Kovar and Emersick will take the face off. It is Emersick who wins it. And Kaya back at full strength. Graham will look to watch the puck down off the boards. Nicely turns away from Lewis Hook. And threads a pass through Thompson across Backlick. He's got Kovar with him. Gets it back. Thompson shoots and scores. Brilliant goal for the Manchester Phoenix. It started with Graham, it was Bakalik, it was Kovar, and Thompson fires a shot through the screen, Stephen Wall. It isn't a power play goal, but the Phoenix do extend the lead. It's Manchester 3, Milton Keynes 0. OK, so you have a great company, you provide a great service, you have a great team. What you really need is more customers. How do you get the message out there? How do you let people know just how great you are? How do you decide how you get noticed? How do you decide which platform? The Phoenix Premier Business Club offers you the complete package, helping you connect to the right people, providing you with the right audience over all the marketing platforms. As a member of the Phoenix Premier Business Club, you'll be able to effectively network, bringing together fellow businesses through trust and relationship building helping companies become walking, talking advertisements for one another. Video as a platform encompasses a greater persuasive effectiveness than many other communication tools. It sells a product or service using sight, sound and, more importantly, emotion. The Phoenix Premier Business Club will capture, produce and edit video marketing modules for you. Focus your online message and presence. The Phoenix Premier Business Club provides your company with a central communication and promotional hub. Engage your customers. Stand out from your competitors. Offering genuine incentives, the Phoenix Premier Business Club will offer you two exciting purchasing incentives, whether it's B2Cs or B2Bs. Your customers' recommendations are still the number one way to gain more business. The Phoenix Premier Business Club will assist you in building a recommendation hub, providing potential customers confidence in you and your service or products. Get your happy customers to sell for you. Be a part of this great business opportunity. Be a part of the Phoenix Premier Business Club. Emersick can't knock it through James Neal. Backlick knocks the puck through. Past County he goes. 
Green as it kicked past him by a big 83 who comes out front. Chance off the pipe, Thompson. Kovar knocking it down, trying to go sharp angle. Wall gets something on it to keep it out. Frankie Bakalik. Kovar trying to sweep the backhander out front. It's through the crease and out the other side. The boards. Icing waved off as Graham is back there for Phoenix. Put under pressure by Curtis Uppy. He looks to turn the puck over. Jameson towards the front of the net and they score. Grant McPherson parked in front as Joe Graham was dispossessed in the corner. We will see if McPherson got a touch on it or whether it's the shot from Jameson that's got through the pads of Stephen Cone. But with 14.09 to go, the shutout is broken. It's Manchester 3, Milton Keynes 1. And with him, Archer carries around the back of the net, keeps it away from Ben Russell, backhand his through, hand sweeps it in off the skate of Stephen Wall. Tony Hand looking for the centering pass for Michael Cerny. I think it's hit both skates to Stephen Wall. Goes in off the left boot and the Phoenix restore the three goal lead. It's Manchester 4, Milton Keynes 1. Emerson got able to knock it down. Curtis Uppy will bring it away for Milton Keynes. County. Forced back by Frankie Backlick. Backlick stick broke, but Kovar will break in. Short handed little move and scores! Too much time, too much room. Robin Kovar with a little dig to free Stephen Wall and then snaps it through his pads. It's a short handed goal for the Manchester Phoenix. They're pulling away. It's Phoenix 5, Lightning 1. In front of the Lightning bench, Green picks it up. Phoenix is back at full strength, they won't be for very long. Kosterek's gone over into the boards. Bakalik and McPherson tied up. McPherson gives Bakalik the pie face. Graham comes in to try and separate them. Jameson's in there as well. McPherson not content to let go of Frankie Bakalik. Gloves are now dropped and Bakalik with a big upper foot on Grant McPherson. He's getting some right hands in there. McPherson trying to fight back, drops to his knees. Bakalik gets one shot in there for good measure. McPherson's got back up and carried on fighting and goes down again. The officials will separate the two. Milan Kosterek has got up and appears to be all right, which is good. Harabri backhand is through. Puppy trying to make his move into the zone, which he does. Has to be backhand across. Kosterek going back door, and Puppy couldn't get his stick out of his feet. Kosterek will hold, tries to centre him pass. Cerny trying to hustle. MK doing a good job of keeping it, and behind the play, there's a fight going on. Corson Heron throwing absolute bombs at Milan Kosterek, and Corson Heron scores the take now. It was behind the play, I've got no idea what started that, but Jacob Corson Heron has dished out an absolute pasting on Milan Kosterek, who's really not had a very good night. Archer this time lets it run for Thompson. Berlin from the point wide shoots off the blocker of Stephen Wall. It'll break down into the corner. Thompson to Archer. Thompson, one last chance as the Phoenix crash the net. Thompson walking inside, shooting, misses, doesn't matter. The Manchester Phoenix has been dominant. It looked like it might be close in the early stages, but gradually the Phoenix just turned the screw and pulled away from a toothless Milton Keynes Lightning. It got a bit tasty at the end, I think it's fair to say the Phoenix won that too. They will take the two points. Final score at the ice though is Manchester Phoenix 5, Milton Keynes Lightning 1. Right, Manchester Phoenix here with our uh, player interviews after the game with quite a good 5-1 win for the Phoenix over the Milton Keynes. We have a man of the match, uh, Stephen Fawn. Steve, it's a good performance tonight. Well worked all three periods. Yeah, you know, it was a, a tough game. A um, bit tougher than the scoreline suggests, I think. But, you know, we took his chance as well. Um, and we needed the two points after yesterday because it was a tough game yesterday and uh, tough conditions, getting there late and straight on the ice. So, uh, you know, really dug it out today and, you know... Um, Worked hard as a team, like you say, and, and got the result in the end. 
Well, that's down. I was down there last night. I had to wait three hours for you to get there. But uh, to be honest with you, I, we, I thought we could have nicked something out of that. It was. It, it wasn't that bad a result. Yeah, I think when you look back at it, it was kind of one of them games that was maybe there for the taking. But you know, you don't want to make excuses. But it is tough when you've been on a bus for nearly seven hours and straight into it, uh, straight after warm up, quick warm up. But you know, it's it's one of them. It could have gone either way, and you know, both goalies played well and. It was only, you know, the odd goal that separated the team. So I think we were unfortunate, really, even despite the conditions. Right, well, on tonight, we scored some lovely goals tonight, um, some really good ones. And uh, yourself, well, you kept us in it for long periods as well. I mean, you did your job tonight, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, you know, I mean, as long as the defence, you know, keep the shots to the outside as much as they can and clear up any rebounds, that's fine. And like I said, we scored some very nice goals today. And I think... Fans will agree we're starting to blossom a bit as a team, you know, and, uh, you know, from the start of the season, I think we've come a long way. We're starting to find his way now and hopefully we're planting the seeds for the, you know, for the playoffs, really, and obviously the cup final coming up. Yeah, well, of course, the cup final is the next big one. I mean, we'll know the dates probably midweek this week. We'll know when we're playing. It can't be too long till we play them. We've got to get it all done and dusted before, before the playoffs. Yeah, it'd be nice to get it done sooner rather than later. You know, like I say, I think we're doing quite well as a team at the moment. Morale's high in the room and you know we, we're up for it. We, we want to bring that silverware in, so uh, it'd, be, it'd be a nice one to win. Steve, let's just keep it rolling because we're, we're good to watch as always and business end of the season, there's still two pots to play for. Exactly, yeah, and uh, you know, we're, we're dead into going for them. You know, we, I think we're finding form at the right time and we're up for it, so. Steve, thanks very much, uh, see you next weekend. Cheers, thanks. I mean, with their man of the match, Lewis Hook. Lewis, not, not convinced it was a 5-1 scoreline. No, the first two periods I thought we were fairly even, to be fair. But then um, we got one back to make it 3-1, but then uh, a quick goal by you guys sort of uh, sealed the deal for the night sort of thing. Yeah, it certainly did, but uh, see, it just seems strange seeing Milton Keynes down there at that end of the table. Of course, we're down there as well this year, yeah. but you, you're not, uh, you shouldn't be scrapping for that last playoff place. No, it shouldn't. You know, past, past few years, um, they've been at top five, top four, you know. It's my first year here, so I, I don't know too much about the history, but... I think we're a better team than eighth place, but um, you know it's the way we've been unlucky in some games, and that's just sort of um, put us down there, really. Big weekend for you next weekend, though. I think, isn't it? You're Brighton away, and then you've got uh, Andre's mob on the Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got a midweek game on the Wednesday against Swindon, so we can get two points there. But yeah, definitely a big, big weekend for us. Um, if we can get four points from that, that's, that will really help us out. To be fair, I thought Wally had a good game tonight, though. I thought he was, he, especially first couple of periods. He's always, he's always probably our best, best player on the ice, you know, he's kept us, in a, kept us in a lot of games, you know. Some games we've lost by uh, one goal, it could have been three or four, some games we've won because of him, you know, he's, he's always cracking, to be fair. OK, Lewis, thanks very much, mate. Have a safe journey back and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. OK, here we are with the post-match uh, interviews. I'm here with Andy and I'm here with uh, the fighting hairdresser, Jacob Cosner. Hi, Jacob. You all right, mate? Yeah, it's, we won it, but it was a tough game again. But Milton Keynes, I don't know about them tonight. I don't know, it was, it was a weird one tonight. I think the first period, if Foley made some huge saves, to be fair. So, um, like, if they would have buried them, who knows? But I think the second and third period, I think that would, we kind of just took the game and that was it. They didn't really... They, I scored an own goal tonight, which is pretty embarrassing. But um, other than that, they, I don't think they had many good chances in the second or third period. Yeah, Phony's already talked about your goal. Has he? Yeah. He should have kept his legs shut. Or his paddle down. That's what he's taught, isn't he? He's terrible. There you go, Stevie. You heard it here first. Andy? Yeah, it seems to be a, a, a bit of a feature that we're a little bit slow out of the blocks the last few weeks. And, and, and then in the second and third periods, we seem to, to dominate teams. Can you put your finger on, on why we, we seem to be a little bit slow? I don't know. We, we've, we've spoken about it. And to be fair... We were better than we was three weeks ago, so we're just, we're just, like when we played against Swindon, you know, we, we came out, it's just about having a good first period, and like last night, to be fair, we, we had the worst preparation for a game because of the traffic, but we, we, we had a decent first period, and we just, we just got to keep, keep concentration in the first, we're just kind of trying to feel the game, we, we've got to be the team pressuring and getting the puck in deep and doing stuff like that, so... Yeah, I think that was that was the, the thing that stood out immediately on Wednesday on Thursday night against yeah. Swindon that that w we came out firing on all cylinders and I think it it perhaps rocked them on the heels a little bit. Yeah, they got main like 
they've got a mainly uh, British core in D and they're all quite young as well so like you want to pressure them on the puck but I don't know for every every shot we seem to have went in on Wednesday and our arch was just just finishing again which is good to see but he gets he gets a lot of chances in a game it's good to see him put him away now so hopefully he keeps that into the cup final and to the playoffs yeah well that's it I mean, we're, we're, we're gearing up we've still got two pots to play for that really is the way we've got to look at it and uh, we're up there with it yeah like when, when we played against Telford um, at home right at the beginning of the season and away you know we've 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 been the better team, to be fair. So we know we, if we turn up, we can beat that team definitely, 100%. So we just got to, on the day, play the way we we want to be and po play positive and just, you know, when we play against the top teams, we seem it seems to be like a a different vibe in the room. Guys seem to just be be more up for it, which I don't know why, but it's just like when we played against Telford, you can just there's a different atmosphere in the room and it's just it's a good buzz. So hopefully, we 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 have that and we 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 win a cup. Right, uh, let's talk about yourself. Last night you walked into a flying elbow. Yeah. Uh, how it is up there? Tonight you nearly ate a stick. Yeah. Last <laughs> last night was was unlucky. I just got hit in the corner, but he kind of his arm came up and yeah. he just whacked my visor into my eye and it just split it open. But yeah. I, I didn't I didn't really realise it was that, as bad as it was until I kind of got off the ice. But um, but yeah, and then tonight he slap shot at a puck at Walker earlier. Just instead of dumping it, he just literally wound up and slap shot him, and he embarrassed himself by diving down there. So I'm glad I did it. To be fair, I don't like him at all. Well, at the end of the day, you got to stick up for yourself. It's a man's game, and that, that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, he cross-checked me, and you know, yeah. it's done. It's sorted. It all adds to the team spirit, doesn't it? When you know that uh, people are going to have to answer for their actions. If they, if they, you know, if they're stupid about things, then. You know, somebody's going to take him to task over it. Exactly, they've got guys that will do that. They've got like Grant McPherson. He's a he's he's a guy who will always back his words up. And uh, Wiggy, you know, Wiggy, they've got guys that will 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 fight guys. So I think at the end of the day, if they've got guys running around too, we should step up to them. Like he's just, I just really don't like the way he's playing tonight. So. Yeah, I, I, I saw Kosterek after after the game. He was talking to Nick Poole and he was indicating that you really caught him a couple of crackers. Yeah, yeah. I I, I know I got him with one because as soon as I hit him and he was on the floor, he was holding his nose. But he, I, I don't know. Well, at, at the right. end of the day, the old days we used to say it keeps the game honest. Yeah, it does. That's that's the thing. If you if you run if I'm running around slashing guys or being an idiot, I expect someone to come after me. And if he's doing it, I ex I'm gonna. He's more in my weight class. If Wiggy's doing it, that's not that's not my cup of tea. But he's he's more my size, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do something about it. Well, Jacob, let's just say. I mean, I thought we were a bit unlucky not to get something out of last night's game. Tonight we got the just reward that we deserved. So all in all, not a bad weekend for us. Not a bad weekend, but I'm just dying for a four pointer. It's killing me. It is absolutely killing me. But I really, I really, I really think we'll 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 win this cup. I, like. We've got a good buzz. Like if we play anything like we did against Swindon, we'll we'll hopefully win the best fans in the league something this year. Right, let's hope we get a full barn and uh, get it rocking for the exactly. cup final. Thank you very much, Jacob. Thanks very much, mate. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers. Jacob. Okay then, just before we wrap up uh, another long show, I've got a script here about the t juniors. I got it from Marvin, and it's longer than Fifty Shades of Grey, but we'll go with it. Apparently, we're going to get an under twenties league coming up. Uh, maybe next season a lot of rumours about it that will give us continuity all the way through from the 10s right up to the 20s and of course the, the GB senior squad and uh, it'll allow players to stay with Phoenix for an extra couple of years not to them get them ready for a EPL side so it's got to be a good idea under 10s they're playing a four team tournament uh, the other day the boys and girls have a fantastic day winning all the three games so well done to the 10s under 16s well they got themselves into a little bit of a uh, Penalty discipline, indiscipline there uh, the other game, and uh, they lost five players for a full game. Didn't stop the other ones from putting on a great show at the Dome. And it's a much bigger Sutton Sting side, sorry, put my teeth back in, Sutton Sting side. They held them nil nil in the first period, and it was nil three at the end of the second. But they lost 5 1, but still a fantastic effort. No late scores for you tonight, but again, I'd like to mention the Great Britain Roadshow that's coming to us next weekend. Come along and have a word, get some merchandise. It's all good and helps the, the national team as they get ready to go to the World Championships in a couple of months' time. Right, that's it for tonight. Basically, you can follow Phoenix everywhere. Get them on Phoenix TV. Get them on our little sister, the podcast. Twitter. 
Well, what else have we got? Facebook and, of course, the official site. Next week, we've got Guildford Flames at home in what will be another cracking game. So, until then, take care.